Good morning. So this morning's project is a MG F with variable valve timing. Can you believe head gasket's gone? There's a surprise. So to do your head gasket on one of these, go in behind the seats through here and you'll see these little toggles that hold the roof. Yeah, just come and clip those. Once you can clip those, there's a carpet in here. Take the carpet out of the way and then you've got a metal shield. I'm going to cross and show you the metal shield. There's the metal shield there. It's got 10mm headed screws holding it on. Yeah, the bolts go through it, hold it on. And if you take that off, I'll go back over to the car. You've then got access to the engine compartment. A bit of light so you can see. And there it is, the offending beast. Um, head gaskets go for fun on these. They were always a pain in the backside. Pretty rubbish. Um, but there you go. Um, that's it. The engines on these are really good, but the, uh, they, they just suffer massively with head gasket problems. So get your roof up, out the way. Get all that stuff out the way. These are those toggles I was telling you about. I hold the roof at the back, and then you're in. Um, there's three down here where the uh, that tray goes, and you've got to just get your fingers in unless you want to take this out of the way. I personally wouldn't. If you struggle a little bit with your fingers, you'll be able to do it. Um, and then I'm going to take this VVTI to so jam belt on the side. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to start stripping it and I'll do a little bit of video of it stripped down to a, uh, to a fashion and then um, and we can have a look to see what's wrong with it. But yeah, MGF. Yeah, MGF. So um, this is how you do it. If you open the boot, you can get to this bit down here. So it's a bit of a some that way, some this way. Um, there you go. I'll be right back. Here we go, a quick look inside the engine. If you can see, can you see all this mustardy, solid, creamy looking oil? It's actually not that bad considering, but you can see that uh, that isn't nice, clean, or even black engine oil. That's, uh, that's got water in it, so it's pretty definite that it's, uh, it's the head. Hopefully the head's not cracked, but we'll send it away to be pressure tested and skimmed. Um, and I'll talk you through the different cylinder gaskets you can get and the uh, one of the most common things on this, I think this one is a plastic dowel model. The dowels that stop the head chattering and they locate it when you put it on. You can change those and they do a stainless steel upgrade now. So we'll be doing that as well. But yeah, uh, definitely get a closer look. That oil is not looking fine. So it's definitely got issues. Um, luckily, don't think it's been ran for a long time because if you look at the case hardening on the, the cam lobes, Everything's looking pretty hunky-dory in there and good. Um, so, right, I will carry on stripping it out and then um, I'll do another video in a bit. I am going to get a better camera eventually so I can actually leave it on a tripod and you can see me and I'll do it. It'll speed it up a little bit so you at least see me doing these things. But um, So now it's get the cam cover off the front down here, get the cam belt off. We'll inspect the cam belt as well. Um, I don't know why we're going to inspect it that much because it will go back with a new one. We'll get the uh, the manifolds off, and then and then it's a head off. So it's not not really a bad job, and there's loads of access. It's not like it's not like a modern car or anything like that. That's a real stress. It's it's quite simple, but um, these engines were made by a company called Powertrain, seemingly, um, and Rover used them for years and years. And K, they're called a K series, and the uh, yeah, they're just trouble. So good, but you just you, they should have given you a key ring with a head gasket on it. Um, so you can change it. Well, there we go. So I'll be right back. Um, cam carrier and the cams. Um, everyone's got major problems with setting up these these Vanos units or Cam Advance units, the VVC, and they have major problems in setting up, timing it, and wondering whether they got it right. So I just thought, you know, what I'll do. I'll do a quick video to show you how it's done. So. If you read on Rave, which is the Rover technical information, there's a special clamp that holds that cam into that advance unit. If you take it out, the way to take these off, this whole cam carrier, is leave the two bolts in the advance unit here because it holds it to the cam carrier. Loosen them a bit so that the gasket will come off as you take it off. You can just give that a quick pull side to side. But that's what you do. You leave those bolts in. So this is what you get when you've got it off. This is how it'll be. This this rod's a little bit loose in here, but that's not end of the world. Right, so to time it up, 
So you can take these out. If these come off and you're taking them off and you're thinking, oh my God, I've destroyed my cart. We've all been there, don't worry. It's dead easy to put back together. Tilt this on its end. You'll see how the piece, the holes and the cam line, you can turn this cam like that and you can alter where it locates in the two holes. So they are easy to put back together. So gaskets, you can't get these gaskets or I couldn't. So use a product called Well Seal. It's good because you can put it on Give them a little nip up at the back when you're putting it back together. Then when you build the head up, you can undo them, squeeze it up, and it'll squeeze up again, and you won't get any oil leaks. Um, the main thing with these is, if you see those cutouts there, as you move this control shaft, you can see them moving. And you'll see it on that side as well. So you can either get a drill or a tool to hold them like that. So they're both in the same place. But what I do is I clean with brake cleaner this area here when I've got the cam off and I put tape over it. So basically, I get a piece of tape and I just hold them in place like that so it's not moving while I'm building it up. Then you can hold this side and this side in your other hand, push the uh, control rod into mesh with the gear there and drop the whole thing in place. You might want someone helping you, but you know, you can do I do it myself on my own. It's, it's fine to do. So once you've got those on, yeah, those, those are lined in. You're now ready to put your push rod in. This thing here. So this push rod goes in and works linear on that. And they're like, well, how do you put your push rod in? Where does it go? Well, once you've got those in line, get your plate that goes under this push rod. Again, you're going to need a bit of well seal on this. Um, on this rubber gasket. I couldn't get these gaskets, so a bit of well seal. That goes on, and your push rod goes in. When your push rod goes in, there's holes on the other side of the cam carrier that you line up. Those holes, when your push rod goes in from that position, obviously it moves those advanced units. So as it goes in, you get that situation. Yeah? And it just takes it off being bound on the gears at the bottom here. So you see how it's bound on the gears. You know, it can't go any further. There's no more cutouts inside the Vanosh unit. So if you locate those, get them lined up, you're ready to go. So line those up there and you're ready to go. Your control shaft's in that links the two. Spin it. Make sure these cams are sat down. Obviously, oil clean and oil the, um, the bearing journals. Make sure your cams are sat down. And I mean, these turn independently, so you won't move the Vanosh units when you're moving these cams until the cam, these are turned by the, uh, the front here when the sprocket's on from the cam belt. So once you've got those in, move them like this. So move it and then put them back. Make sure they line up again because you could be a tooth out. Yeah, and you don't want to be a tooth out because it's going to affect it and you have to strip the whole car again and you really don't want to do this job twice. So there they are lined up. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put well seal on this. I'm going to get the control plunger in. When the control plunger's gone in a few teeth, so it's in its extended position, but it's just meshed, you know it's in the right place because there's cutouts inside the carrier. I'll show you. And if you look there, through there, you'll see the holes line up when the plunger's in the right position. Yeah. And then you know you're ready to put all the cover on, put the plunger in, and it's right. You can drop it back together, and uh, you're good to go. And you know you've timed it up properly, so you're not going to have any problems. So there we go. You've fitted, put this base plate on, again, a bit of well seal. Make sure you wipe it so the well seal, if it tightens up this gasket, you don't get any of it going down the tube where the push rod goes with the linear shaft, because you don't want it to go tight on there and start binding you have to strip it all down. So that's in there. You're now ready to put the push rod in. So you oil the push rod, slide it in. And when you slide it into position where it's ready to build up, those holes inside there, if I can point in there, you will be able to see them come into show. Uh, they'll, they'll show themselves and you'll see they're in line. Now, just when you do, just hold that control rod up because I, t I tend to do this on its end, but I'm holding my camera. But just hold that rod so it doesn't slip out and mesh. I've never had one slip out, but it might do so. 
I'm not sure. So yeah, when you push that push rod to the right point, they'll line up. Then you're ready to put, build up the body on this, and then you just build it up like a normal car. Honestly, the dead easy. If you've got any questions, just ask. Um, and, and you're done. You throw it back together and, uh, and wait till you do your head gasket in another day. That's MGs. That's K-Series for you. So there we go. That's how to do it. Thanks for watching. Okay, um, head gasket on these MGFs. This is the Glacer make this product. It's a multi-layer gasket. Um, so new dowels, if you've had it skimmed, just take a little bit off the top of your dowels. Sometimes they go a bit tight. Um, these are the ones that come in the set. These are paying ones. And it has like an intermediate gasket to go on there as well. So it has this gasket and then your normal head gasket. It's like a shim. Um, you chatter, don't go with them. Go with one of those gaskets and you'll find that um, everything will be good. So if we go to the car, I've got the dowels in. I've just uh, milled a very, very tiny bit off the top. Um, there it is. Um, spin the gasket the right way around, that'd help. And it just drops on there like so. And it's ready to be built up. So yeah, they're not a difficult job. But uh, just keep your wits about you with what you buy. And um, if you do, you'll be fine. Thanks for watching.